Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name is Camel, and today we are going to talk about one of the most insanely unique, overpowered, and interestingly creepy, crawly weapons and or utilities in Skyrim. Technically, they are scrolls as they fit into the scroll slot within your inventory. However, they aren't bits of paper. They are literally enchanted weaponized spiders. If you are unfamiliar with them, they are not a mod and only require you to have the Dragonborn DLC installed. Timestamps for the overviews of each different type of spider can be found down in the description, along with links to my social medias and other Skyrim Special Edition guides. Be sure to check them out. Now, I had totally forgotten that these spiders existed and thought such an awesome addition to your arsenal should have an in-depth guide. And boy oh boy, are some of these spiders overpowered. Like, for example, this. So stick around and find out how you can just about literally turn your character into Spider-Man. So what we'll need to do is come to White Ridge Barrow. This can be found in the northern regions of Solstheim. Once here, head inside. Now in here, you'll find many interesting things. One such thing is Dukat, an ancient dragon priest of Solstheim who bears the eponymous dragon priest mask, which I have a guide for. But for right now, what you want to do is loot everything spider related you can. And you'll also come across these geo deposits in here. Loot them as well. But again, loot everything you can spider related. You'll need all of it for later on crafting the spiders. So once inside the barrow, keep on making your way through past all of the very strange enemies until you reach the door to White Ridge Sanctum. While you probably won't get lost, the door can be found here on the local map. Now once inside the sanctum, as soon as you come out into this big room, turn to the left and go up the wooden ramp and through the connecting tunnel. Once you head through that, we'll come out into this strange room full of spiders and a rather large cage. The cage will be locked, so do whatever you must to open it. Inside, we'll find a bunch of important loot for making spiders. We'll find this dead guy, Servos Rendus. I've done a video explaining the full story behind his mad spider experiments. If you'd like to check that out, feel free to do so. But what's important for us now is this gadget on the table here the imbuing chamber. We'll run through all of the different spiders and the ingredients needed to make each of the spiders, but for now, what I'll do is give you a quick rundown of how this thing works. It acts like any container. You drop in the required ingredients, which we'll run through in a second. Then, once they're in, you flick the switch, and for each set of ingredients, you will receive three of the relevant spider type. So if you put in 10 sets of ingredients, you'll get out 30 spiders. Any ingredients that weren't consumed during the process will remain within the chamber like any standard container. So there are four different main types of spiders with four different subtypes within them. So in total, there are 16 unique different types of spiders slash spider scrolls that you can create with this imbuing chamber. To equip them, simply go into your inventory and then go to your scroll section and they'll be there. You'll equip them like a weapon and you can even jewel wield them. So first up, let's take a look at the jumping spider. Spiders. Also, each of these spider scrolls has the same weight and value. So we'll only run through it once and it's a weight of 0.5 and a value of 100. So first up, there is the jumping flame spider, which is made up of one ruby or flawless ruby and one albino spider pod. There is the jumping frost spider, which is made up of one sapphire or flawless sapphire and one albino spider pod. There is the jumping poison spider, which is made up of one emerald or flawless emerald and one albino spider pod. And finally, there is the jumping shock spider, which is made up of one amethyst or flawless amethyst and one albino spider pod. So these all work the same way, they just do different types of damage. So the jumping spiders, you can have six active at any time. You throw them down and they will follow you around until they are destroyed, whether that be by self-destruction or killed by an enemy. Your foes will recognize the jumping spiders as a threat and attack them. If they are killed before they get to explode on their own terms, they will not explode at all and just be wasted. However, if they get to jump in, they will explode with great ferocity. While they aren't the best 
bang for your buck when compared to some of the other spider types you can create, they can get the job done. And when they get a chance to do that job, it's done very well. Oh, and did I mention you get a small army of jumping spiders that explode and destroy your enemies? It's pretty cool. For the best use of jumping spiders, I'd suggest throwing them down before a fight. Then once the fight commences, they'll follow you into battle and come leaping out of nowhere to blast your enemies into the past. So the jumping spiders are cool and somewhat useful, but they are super weak and will die if hit at all, unlike some of the other spiders you're about to see. So if I were you, I'd hold off on making jumping spiders and consider putting your resources into these bad boys, the cloaked spiders. So first up, there is the flame cloaked spider, which is made up of one ruby or flawless ruby, one albino spider pod, and one salt pile. There is the frost cloaked spider, which is made up of one sapphire or flawless sapphire, one albino spider pod, and one salt pile. There is the Poison Cloaked Spider, which is made up of one Emerald or Flawless Emerald, one Albino Spider Pod, and one Salt Pile. And there is the Shock Cloaked Spider, which is made up of one Amethyst or Flawless Amethyst, one Albino Spider Pod, and one Salt Pile. So these all work the same and deliver different types of damage. But in general, how do the Cloaked Spiders work? Well, you can have six active at any time, they will follow you around until they are destroyed. Now, unlike the jumping spiders, however, these have a pretty decent health pool and can take multiple hits from your enemies before being killed. So they will last much longer and they also have infinite use as long as they stay alive, unlike the jumping spider that even when it gets to attack, it can only attack once and explodes. Whereas these cloaked spiders just stay alive and keep on killing stuff until they kill themselves. So these cloaked spiders in terms of bang for your buck are far superior to the jumping spiders. They also seem to deliver huge amounts of damage, toppling enemies within seconds. These are great to have by your side. As soon as an enemy is nearby, they'll run straight over to them. Surviving several blows, that's if the enemy can even get a hit in, as they'll likely be swiftly vanquished by your cloaked spiders, which appear to emit a punchy AOE damage in a small area. So these can take more hits, they last as long as they're alive and technically have infinite use. And the only material difference when creating them is a salt pile the most basic ingredient of all. So cloaked spiders, in my personal humble opinion, are definitely where I would be using my spider resources. And for all of you that wanted capes in Skyrim, well, you can finally get your cloak with these eight-legged chums. Next on the list, we have the exploding spiders. First up, there is the exploding flame spider, which is made up of one ruby or flawless ruby and one damaged albino spider pod. There is the exploding frost spider, which is made up of one sapphire or flawless sapphire and one damaged albino spider pod. There is the exploding poison spider, which is made up of one emerald or flawless emerald and one damaged albino spider pod and finally there is the exploding shock spider which is made up of one amethyst or flawless amethyst and one damaged albino spider pod these things are pretty ridiculous and are literally skyrim's version of grenades they are dead spiders and when thrown will explode provided they are near an enemy or hit an enemy and if not they will just lie on the ground until damaged or until an enemy walks near them. Be careful though because if one lands on the ground and doesn't explode it cannot be picked back up but you can knock it along the ground until you reach an enemy but this is just a silly waste of time. So instead make sure your aim is damn good before potentially wasting these Skyrim spider grenades. They act like one of the destruction runes only instead of casting it you're lobbing it. It's pretty cool, like if you want to say throw a few over a wall onto a group of unsuspecting bandits, and to be fair no one is prepared for a bunch of exploding spiders to be thrown over the wall. So they are fun, they are a bit of a meme, but um, I don't think they're the best use of your resources when it comes to creating these spiders. If you're going to be consuming gems, I would definitely suggest that you make the cloaked spiders. But if you're going to be making any spiders, you might want to consider making some of these guys. The four utility spiders, one of which is the most overpowered thing in all of Skyrim. So finally, the utility spiders, although one of them is super OP damage spider. Anyway, let's start off with the pack spider. 
This is made up of one albino spider pod and one unit of bone mold. Now you might have noticed that the spider is grey and yellow, but in the image I have put it as the flaming spider. There is a reason for that as we'll see here, as in your inventory the pack spider has the model of a flaming spider, however in your hand it has the model of a grey and yellow spider. Then when you throw it, while it's in the air it turns into a flaming spider model, then once it lands it turns into a grey and yellow spider. No idea why this happens, I guess you could say it's bugged. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> it's actually not funny because a spider technically isn't a bug, although the definition of bug is blurred. But what isn't blurred is how damn good these pack spiders are. So you can only have one active at a time. You can have it active along with five other spiders, but you can only have one pack spider going at any given time. So once it's down, you click on it and it will open like any other container in the game. If you give it too much to carry, it will only take what it can carry and the rest will remain within your inventory. As we can see, it's carrying 120 units that weigh 0 0.5 each, so we can calculate that a pack spider has a carry weight of 60, which is not bad at all. Like the cloak spider, these pack spiders can take a fair few hits before dying, and if your pack spider does die, you can loot its corpse and get your items back, then throw down another pack spider, hand it the items, and be on your way once more. Now provided the pack spider doesn't die, it will stay by your side and follow you around like any other spider. Again, however, you can only have one of these active at any given time. Now these little suckers are great, and regardless of your playstyle, these will be genuinely useful, as they don't replace a follower and they don't take the place of anything else you already had. With that said, I wouldn't walk around with one of these out all the time, but in those situations where you can't quite haul all of the loot out of a dungeon, drop one of these and have it carry the stuff back for you. On top of all of their usefulness, they are super duper cheap to make an albino spider pod and bone mold. That's nothing for the amount of use you get out of them. So pack spiders have the camel tick of approval and have won the local small business award of Skyrim. Cheap, handy and useful for every playstyle. These guys are truly ahead of the pack. Next we'll look at the glowing spider. This is made up of one albino spider pod and one glowing mushroom. To test this, I found the darkest area I could find with short notice. As you can see, it's pretty dark. Throw down the spider and voila! As we can see, it illuminates the hallway quite well. So in terms of brightness and radius and such, the glowing spider is great. However, there is a huge flaw with them though. If you're running around, for example, through a dark tunnel, the glowing spider will always be running behind you. So nothing in front of you, i.e. all the stuff that you're looking at, will be lit up. Unless you stop and wait for the spider to catch up, and then you can only look at stuff when you're standing still, which is super impractical for Skyrim. And then also its light source is on the ground, so if you have it next to you and you're trying to look at stuff on a table in a dark room, the light is under the table. So the top of the table won't be lit up and you're like, well I can't see what I want to look at anyway. So that is a massive flaw to me. It renders the glowing spiders useless, or at the very least incredibly impractical. It's a cool idea, it's cute, and it has glowing eyes, it lights up an area nicely, but sadly it's always three steps behind and one inch from the ground, and leaving everything in front of you unlit and as dark as it was without the spider. So to this thing I say, glow away. Next we'll be taking a look at the mind control spider. Yes, you heard that correctly. This is made up of one albino spider pod and one soul gem. This can be any soul gem and it doesn't have to be filled. So the mind control spider works exactly how you would imagine it. You throw the spider onto an enemy and they become friendly to you and hostile towards your enemies. Now like the exploding spiders, be careful that you don't miss because if you do, the first object they hit will cause them to explode into a pile of green sludge, which is absolutely useless unless you work for Nickelodeon. So there are some weird little mechanics with this that I want to talk about here. Firstly, the best one is that there is no level cap when it comes to the enemies that this can affect. Oftentimes you'll have an effect that works on enemies say up to level 32 or up to level X. Well this works on any level enemy, so you can be level 400 fighting a level 400 Forsworn Briarheart 
throw it on them, and let them wipe out their entire camp. So this works on any level enemy, which means the mind control spider will remain useful to you throughout your entire playthrough. And of course, they only work on things that are affected by uh, such effects. Like humans, elves, animals, they won't work on things such as elementals or dragons, etc. So when you use one on an enemy, that mind controlled enemy won't be your ally. They won't attack you, nor will they follow you. They will attack any of your enemies in the area, and if you accidentally attack them while they are mind controlled, they will become instantly hostile towards you, although they will still be under the mind control effect. So them taking damage from other enemies will not snap them out of the mind control spider. You can also throw mind control spiders onto enemies as many times as you like, or onto as many enemies as you would like. So these spiders are super fun to use in big groups. Throw some on a few of them and watch a group of eight bandits kill each other. Regardless of playstyle, you find a use for these, I guarantee. Even if you're about to be killed in combat, throw one of these on the enemy and you've bought yourself a 30 second break or a window where you get to heal yourself, run away, do whatever. Or just take a super cheap shot while the enemy stands there looking at you like, what's this spider on my neck, boy? And while they're doing that, you can clock them in the head with a giant hammer. So they do have many uses and are great fun. And did I mention that you were throwing mind control spiders at people? How awesome is that? Finally, we have the most fun and ridiculously scripted spider of all, the oil spider. This is made up of one albino spider pod and one dwarven oil. Now, when I read that it releases oil when it feels threatened, I thought, what a rubbish spider. I have never been so wrong. These oil spiders, when enemies are nearby, will release these puddles and clouds of this weird purple material. When this is met with fire, serious, serious, serious damage is delivered. Also, if a living oil spider is hit by flames, they will explode in a uniquely vicious expulsion of white light. I thought these would drop little puddles of oil that would set on fire and enemies would step in them and take a little fire damage or no. No, these things are like napalm. Nuclear, they're nuclear spiders. They also have something very, very wrong with their scripting. As when an oil spider explodes, it seems to spawn more oil spiders that explode, which then spawn more oil spiders that explode, and so on. For example, six oil spiders and a whole lot of oil met by fire result in this. Despite only having six spiders, as we can see, there's the corpses of tens, if not hundreds of spiders. So there is some weird unforeseen chain reaction or <laughs> webbing effect. Probably not intentional, but forget that. Who cares about intentional? Use it to your advantage and literally have a blast. I found the best way to use these oil spiders is throw a few down and have a fire-based magic spell in your other hands ready to go so you can set off the devastating chain reaction when the time is right. And it's not all show and noise, these things deliver massive damage. I don't know the numbers, but I do know anything that was engulfed in a blinding flash of igniting oil spiders never came out alive. This includes dragons. So while the oil spider will more likely become a playstyle while being used, i.e. you have to walk around with flames in one hand and the oil spider in the other hand, it could be well worth it and a really fun way to play. And it's also cheap to make. And I don't think that this combo of oil spider and fire spell will replace your everyday weapon. But if things really need some spice, you have the means to vaporize your foes in a wall of blinding spider light. I really cannot praise these things highly enough. Anything, I mean anything that was hit by an explosion of oil spider died. I wasn't joking when I said they're overpowered. You throw down a little spider, it farts out some oil, you throw some fire on it, and every enemy within the area is vanquished. They are a brilliant addition to everyone's arsenal. Again, if you don't want to use them all the time, that's understandable, but it is fun for those situations where you think, I might die here. Well, if you're gonna die, you might as well try out an oil napalm nuclear exploding spider. So overall, 
These spiders are awesome additions. Out of the damaging spiders, particularly, I would suggest using the cloaked spiders. They can take hits and stay alive, and they also aren't a one-time use like the other spiders, as they will stay deployed and by your side until they are killed rather than being used up in a single attack like the jumping spiders or the exploding spiders. They also deal very reasonable damage and will be an awesome addition to your spider army. The pack spider is a must-have for everyone. Not to be used all the time, but you have a backup carry weight of 60 ready to go when need be, is immensely useful and will find a place in everyone's playthrough. We've all been there in the Dwemer ruin and you want to haul out all this stuff and you just can't. Well, get this guy to carry it. The Mind Control Spider, it's pretty cool. I don't think everyone will use it, but I mean, everyone could use it. All it requires is you chuck some ingredients into a box and then suddenly you have something that can turn your enemies into your enemies' enemies. It's brilliant, instead of two enemies attacking you, you throw one on one of them and suddenly the two enemies are killing each other and you don't have to do anything. Brilliant. And finally, the oil spider. It's insane. You saw what it does, you saw how broken it is. Carry some on you at all times and use it like a Kamehameha. For when things are looking really bad, you can just blow everything up and atomize your enemies in a wall of pyro arachnid fire. So my friends, have fun playing as Spider-Man or as the Spider Queen commanding your little army of spiders. And here they are, some of your new eight-legged friends in action. What do you need? There you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my guide for the Spider Scrolls of Skyrim, the most awesome little additions to anyone's arsenal. I do hope that this video helped you out and if it did, you will be very interested in checking out the other Skyrim special edition guides I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now down there in the old description, you can find links to my social medias. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy. So your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.